Hi, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, where we bring you the best guests that we can find. We extract the signal from the noise. Rick Mattingly is here, and he is an IT practitioner with Kroger. Uh, he's based in Cincinnati. Rick, thanks for taking some time with us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, yeah, so Dave. we heard um, in the panel today that you and I were, were on how you're using Flash, but for our audience, why don't you maybe review some of that as exactly what you're doing with Flash, what applications you're targeting, and, and how that's all working. Yeah, so the main thing we're targeting is really our database infrastructure. Um, and we run several different databases. We run SQL and Oracle and DB2, and just making those environments better for our customers. Uh, the other environments that we're really leveraging is our virtualization environment. Um, and that's including virtualization desktops and virtualization servers, and just uh, being able to make that perform at a better level. Yeah, and you were essentially in the panel saying that the um, the, the approach of virtualizing uh, or using Flash to, for for virtualizing databases is is relatively new because your application developers, your data your database administrators, they don't want to virtualize databases because of the virtualization tax, but Flash changes that. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, a lot of times the, the virtualization tax feels like an I/O issue. So um, when you put the virtualization layer into a um, SSD environment uh, and you put the databases on there, it, it actually performs better for them. So um, they, don't, they don't think of it anymore as a tax. So they're not fighting you when, uh, when you right. want to virtualize yeah. their, their mission critical easier. apps. Um, you also mentioned to me last night that because of the consumer drive, there's such awareness now of technologies. I mean, it's really all bubbling up from, you know, Steve Jobs started it all, I yeah. guess. And people are aware that, that flash storage is, is available. And, and you were saying to me that they're actually pushing you for, to, to have you deploy Flash for certain applications, even though you're saying they don't really need it. Right. Talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so it's not so much, you know, we, we will ask the age old question, okay, what are your requirements? And uh, I really don't really know what our requirements are, but just give us Flash, we want Flash. Well, well, do you really need and Flash? And pay for it for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, and the good thing is that they'll pay up front, but then we'll pay for the next, you know, 50 years and that type of thing. So, yeah, they continue to want that. Classic and, IT problem, it, right? Yeah, <laughs> what, what we see really is, it's the consumerization of the enterprise, so um, no longer is the desktop team determining what kind of desktop people will use, no longer is the storage team determining what type of storage they're going to use. The customer comes and says, hey, I want this. Well, why do you want that? Well, because that's what I use all the time now. So, and, and they're just, the consumer feels very empowered to make those decisions for you, and, and you'll push back, right, because you always want the, the betterment for the company, and you're always worried about costs and things like that, but they continue to push and push until sometimes you have to give in and a lot of times flash is one of those things you just say okay here you go so you're virtualizing uh, SAP applications is that right uh, uh, or are you not today not virtualization no. SAP, not today. okay I know you've got some you know internal projects or, that are around uh, 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 SAP um, do you see the day where you will actually run that on on flash those applications those those more transaction-oriented applications, or are you guys still trying to figure that out? No, we, we will run it. We, we, don't, we don't run SAP. I'm not sure we heard that, so we'll, we can talk about that. But Maybe I'm uh, confusing with somebody else. I, yeah, sorry about that's that. That's okay. I just assumed in um, your business, but uh, okay. No, but we are seeing where transactional databases are going to be running on Flash. and. and um, so your main systems are, I mean, what, 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 what's running your business? Can you talk about that a little bit? The back-end storage or? Yeah, this is the, the applications that are running your business. Uh, most of it, run, we, we have Oracle, SQL, that's the databases we run it on. As far as the applications, I can't really talk about the yeah. applications as okay. much. Okay, so you're, but you're virtualizing Oracle and SQL yep. today. Yep. And, and you're also running those on Flash, is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. And, yep. and so, um, whereas maybe two or three years ago, you wouldn't even thought about you know, right. virtualizing no, those. It would, well, you couldn't think about virtualizing them because, you know, and VMware and, and those companies have come a long way to improve the experience for the end users, but it's still, there's still that, that question about the I.O. and those type of things. So you, you combine those technologies with the Flash technologies and... Um, Okay, so, so you're dropping the TMS product in, it's now called Flash Systems, uh, yep. IBM's rebranded that. You're dropping that in as a block-based device, the application sees no changes, No. right? No, and, nope. and that's part of the appeal, I presume. Yep. Right? Um, and so, from an economic standpoint, um, how are you justifying that? We heard today all kinds of you know benefits. What about Kroger? What are they specifically seeing? So, so where I see the economical justification for that is, as you move those higher end performance driven applications off of your traditional spinning disk, what happens is 
you, you stop needing that tier one layer, that enterprise class, those DS 88,000s 88, and as those type of storage, and, and you can leverage lower in the 7.2K, the XIV type systems um, for the bulk of your data because you've moved that, that little bit of data that's eating up all your performance to flash. It runs like it's supposed to now. And now you have all these huge amounts of data, block data, that doesn't need the performance and it can run successfully on your XIV or your cheaper storage where in the past you just went out and bought DS8800s and DS8800 and DS8800, you just put it all on there. So I want to um, explore a little bit and maybe double click on something that we talked about earlier, which is the whole tiering. Mm -hmm. So you've got you know tiered storage, you've got a you know pyramid, if you will, the mm -hmm. you know the hierarchy of storage that everybody talks about. And then you're adding in the top layer, which is tier zero. Mm -hmm. And you were suggesting, at least in the near term, you don't see the lower ends of the pyramid collapsing. Um, you're just really adding in tier zero and those other ones are, are largely preserved. Do you see that preservation as occurring over the mid to long term? So where I see the collapse again is it's kind of that tier one or that that 15k, 300 gig, you know 450 gig disk. Short stroke drives. Yeah, it just, it th makes that, no sense anymore. That'll right? collapse. Um, you know Steve mentioned it in the presentation earlier today about uh, tape, tape still around. Well, just like tape still around, you, you're always going to need that that big four terabyte, three terabyte disk because there, there will be applications, there will be programs, there will be workloads. They just have a lot of data, but so little performance, right? So something that needs 20 terabytes just by itself, but doesn't need a very high performance footprint, it doesn't make sense to put in a flash environment yet. It makes sense to put on big four terabyte disk. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you're a multi-vendor shop, like most customers. Yes. Uh, talk about why uh, you chose the Texas Memory Systems uh, product, why, why IBM, you know, how they doing for you. So we, we chose TMS. We have a good relationship with IBM, worked with uh, our partners at IBM, and, and we have a comfort level with their support and their um, willingness to work with us. Um, and, and it was a good product. We put it in. and. It's very easy to configure. We knew it's going to always be supported behind our SVC environment, being another IBM product. Mm -hmm. And because of that um, support that we knew was going to be there, we ultimately chose What's those. on their to-do list in your view? And TMS, uh, a, a little higher redundancy to be able to make some changes without having to shut the box down. Um, there's just Ooh, a so non-disruptive operations. Yeah, right? there's, a few, there's a few things left that, that are still disruptive. Um, I think that the maturity is there in the disk space levels, um, your XIVs and your DS8s and your V7000s. Um, there is minimal to no reason to ever take those boxes down. Mm -hmm. With the SSD, there's still some opportunity there for upgrades and things like that that would cause an outage and you have to move that data off. SVC makes that a little easier, but it's still... So bringing that data and volume management stack into that flash world, okay. Yeah. Um, Rick, last question is, is: What's really exciting you, you know, within you know the technology world today? What do you get excited about? Well, I, honestly, it's it's the thing that frustrates me the most. It's this consumerization of IT. So, you know, just like everybody else, I, or not everybody else, but a lot of people, I have my iPad and, and those type of things. And and as much as I complain about the people pushing us to do certain things because, well, that's what I like to do. I, I'm on the flip side. I'm the one saying, well, we should do this because that's what people like to do. So it's that convergence of um, technologies from a consumer point of view and really the enterprise and, and the consumer market, really the, li the lines are blending and, and you don't really see a huge difference anymore. You hear the data centers and things like that, people don't have data centers, but I mean, there's a lot of people that have NAS drives in their house anymore. Who would have ever thought that? So that's really what excites me about the whole environment and, and just hearing that and, and, and like I said, a little frustrating, but I'm still on that bandwagon where I do it too. There you have it, folks. IT practitioner, he's got a love-hate <laughs> with all the consumerization. Rick Mattingly, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your time, and it was great meeting you. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back uh, with our next guest. This is Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE.